Holy Spirit to be in this place. In fact, that's what makes this a church, is when you have the presence of the Holy Spirit with us as we worship together. All is vain. Everything else is vain. I don't. It doesn't matter how good it is and how great it is. It is all in vain unless the Holy Spirit come and show himself and minister to our hearts and our needs. We come this morning uh, to worship and to give praise unto God for all that he's blessed us with. Our usher is going to come. We're going to have a time of prayer. Of course, we've got many, many objects of prayer that are listed in your bulletin. You have the names that are there. Continue to pray for Joe and Amy this morning. Miss Amanda Gaddy, please remember her in your prayers. We're glad to have Charles and Betsy back with us Amen. this morning. Amen. 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 You want to give them a hand? Yeah. Yeah. Keep a good couple down. I'm just going to tell you that. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, if they can survive all that, there's hope for the rest of us this morning. Amen. And uh, we're blessed for them to be here this morning. And uh, we have so many others that are in need of prayer. This is a special need of prayer. Uh, the entire family, here's an entire family that has this COVID virus. The dad, two young children that are running a high fever this morning. The mom is very sick and uh, there's a fear that they will be put in the hospital. Please pray for bad, uh, Brad, Brittany, Alex, and Gage Clifton. Uh, this is a need of prayer for this family this morning. And uh, uh, we also, many of you have been receiving some information from me for the last couple of days of the family that uh, has lost their uh, dad in a terrible, terrible situation. I've been trying to minister to the family uh, Friday and yesterday, a family with seven children in their home. And the dad was... Um, burned up in an automobile. And the wife is there with these seven children. Mm. They have no family around. And uh, so uh, I've been trying to reach out uh, for this church to reach out to them and to minister to them. Uh, there's some health issues with some of the children. We cannot do what we normally do with families about taking a meal because the children have uh, some allergies and they are here. And I have just left word with the, with the wife and the mother uh, that we're available to sort of support her during this difficult yes. time. Yes. Uh, so please pray uh, for this family uh, in a very special way of prayer. Uh, we also uh, still collecting items for school supplies. Uh, we're really collecting money if you want to, if you'd rather not buy the supplies. Miss Marie, raise your hand so they can see you. Right over here, this little lady right over here. Uh, if she walks around to you and got her hand out, you know what, it's, it's not for her. It is for school supplies for all of our kids. <laughs> and so if you'd like to help out, be a part of that, be involved in that, you see her and they're going to take care of this and uh, they're going to make sure that we uh, supply some things for our children here in the church as well. Um, did you look at all the, all the birthdays on the back of the bulletin? Uh, I, did you look at all the birthdays on the back? I, I'm just asking. Don't look at me like I didn't hear you, preacher. I just want to make sure this is all right. This is on. Well, there's a list of all of them. I'm not going to call them all out by name this morning. Uh, but we've got uh, we got some uh, uh, Eli right over there. Tomorrow, tomorrow, this young man. You know, he just when he was here and now he's up there looking down on mom and daddy. And uh, but Eli's got a birthday tomorrow. And Ray Holland's going to have one, and uh, I, I don't want to go through calling out. I might miss somebody, and I might miss some on here on purpose uh, that's listed in here. Uh, <laughs> but but, uh, but the name's in here, and uh, who else told me about an anniversary? Uh, 53. Somebody told me 50-something years. It was me. It was you. <laughs> August the 2nd, be 53 years. Amen. 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 Anybody else want to? 17 years, August 28th. All right. Anybody else? 
22nd. Boy, I'm proud of these wow. men. I'm really proud of these men that know the dates and know how many years it is. <laughs> that, that ought to be something in their favor, right? <laughs> yeah. Amen. Anybody else had a, got, going to have one? If you think about it before by next Sunday, just tell us next Sunday. And <laughs> <laughs> All right. Will you pray with me this morning? Let's bow together. Father, we're so grateful. We have more to be thankful for this morning than we could thank you. You have been so good to us. You have blessed us. You provided for our needs. Lord, that we're <coughs> able to be here this morning. We do offer our thanks and our praise to you uh, because you're God and you're worthy of all of our worship and all of our praise. I pray that you'll bless this congregation this morning because we've gathered here for one reason, that is to honor you and to glorify you. But while we come, we're grateful that we can tell you what our needs are. We've heard the names and the needs of so many families this morning that are going through times that, Lord, they could not make it without you. We pray for these families, entire families, that are burdened this morning. Lord, I pray you'll feel that place in their heart. They'll sense right now the presence of God. They'll know that you're with them. They'll feel your arms around them. You'll lift them up and you'll support them in a very special way. Our Father, we thank you this morning that we could come here to worship. And a part of our worship is the giving of our gifts to you. But we realize that we're given to a God that does not need anything. Who owns everything, who has everything. And it is not just for your glory, that is the reason we give. But it is a way that you can bless us and pour out your blessings upon us. And our Father, we thank you to know that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So, Lord, accept our gifts this morning as we offer them to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs>
for singing for us this morning. Amen? Amen. 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 We make the Christian life so complicated, I think it's that simple. Just follow me, Jesus said. You just follow me, and I'll never lead you wrong. I'll never lead you astray. Just keep your eyes on me and follow me. You might have noticed that uh, there is a uh, you say, we're in the world of all of our young people. Well, they've been at camp since Thursday, and they are coming back. They may be on their way now. You might hear them outside by the time we get out of church, but they're supposed to be out there. So they've been, about 20 of them have been uh, in camp for the last several days. And uh, so uh, we, we're grateful for that. We're thankful for uh, those that are willing to go and to sacrifice and to make this a special time for our young people. Uh, these are some new songs that the choir sung this morning, and we're grateful for that. And uh, if you want to be a part of the choir, we'll be practicing at 5.30 this afternoon, 6.30 on Wednesday night. We're trying to work out something. Uh, we'll let you know uh, by uh, before Wednesday. But we're going to try to work out something since next week is going to be Bible school starting next uh, Sunday evening. If we can work it out with our children and youth in here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock so they can go over. They're going to go in a few minutes and, and learn these Bible school songs. And then they, hopefully they'll be able to be in here on Wednesday and uh, we'll just move someplace else. They can move us out and uh, it doesn't matter about us, does it? Uh, it doesn't matter about us, do you know? You know, it, it's all right with us, isn't it? It's all right if we move somewhere else, some part of the building, and uh, have our Bible study on Wednesday night. So please remember that, if you will, and uh, be a part of that. And then pray for our Bible school and for all of our workers and our leaders that's going to be a part of our Bible school. All the other announcements in the bulletin, please uh, remember that and uh, be a part of of what the Lord is doing for us. Well, I'm aware of, uh, of what's going on. Sometimes you may wonder, does a preacher know what's going on in our world? Do you, do you know what's going on in our county? Uh, well, I am. I'm aware of, uh, of uh, this virus that we're still having to deal with. I'm fully aware of that. Uh, I know that... Um, I know that there are some churches and there are some places that have a spread of this COVID virus inside their church. We want to be very careful. Uh, we want to make sure that we are careful. Amen. Amen. I think you can be careful and trust God at the same time. Yes. I think you can. We're not going to be foolish. And so uh, if you're, uh, you know... Uh, so you, you just kind of move around at your own discretion. that will be fine. Nobody will think you don't like me or you don't want to speak to me if you don't want to do that. I know our children and young people that are here, they're going to the fellowship hall. And, uh, and so they're going to they're gonna run over these Bible school songs over there. So when we stand up, if you want to get out of your pew, speak to somebody. If you want to wave at somebody, uh, they'll wave back. They'll wave back at you. I promise you they will. If they don't, you tell us about it. We'll make sure they do, all right? But you, at least everybody can wear a smile, right? Amen. Don't cost you a thing. It doesn't spread a thing. 
if you got a smile on your face. Amen. We're glad some Denise's family, Mr. Tyson's wife and her sister that are here with us this morning. What a blessing it is to have them with us today. And uh, we've held them up in our prayers. We continue to do that. But we're glad that they're here with us this morning. Would you like to stand? And our children are going that direction. And I don't know which direction you're going in. But uh, they're going to play something. We have a lot of folks that love to walk up and down the highway out in front of the church throughout the week. 
I'm just thinking, can you imagine somebody walking up the road out there and hearing this noise going on inside this building this morning? And they probably would say, well, it says Baptist on the sign out there, but are you sure Baptists do that? <laughs> yeah, we do. We're, we're guilty of that. I just sort of found out, you know, when I read my Bible, when you get to heaven, they're going to be clapping their hands. And the psalmist said, go clap your hands and give praise unto the Lord. I even, I even read one time the Bible where the trees are clapping their hands together and giving thanks unto God. Well, if they can do it, I'll tell you, we can do it as well. And I need to mention Miss May is here this morning. We're glad that she's able to be here and to be a part of our service. You have your Bibles this morning. You already see on the screen where you need to turn in your Bible as we continue to think about this unique man in the Old Testament by the name of Saul. Unusual man. Had so much potential. So much going for him. As long as he stayed humble. And when he stayed humble, God raised him up. When he made himself little in the sight of God, God made him big. In fact, he raised him up and set him on a throne. He was high and lifted up as he sat on that throne and began to rule and to reign over God's people. But it wasn't long until that pride went to his head. And when he thought he was somebody, God made sure that he learned that he was nobody without God. If we humble ourselves, we have to let God do the lifting up. But if we lift ourselves up and exalt ourselves, there will come a time and a place where God humbles us. And I will stand here this morning and tell you it's a whole lot easier and a whole lot better to humble yourself than for God to humble you. Saul is on the throne. He is the highest position in the land. He was the leader over the people of God. But it wasn't long until Saul fell off the throne and lost his crown and he ended up in a place where nobody would have ever been able to tell him that's where you're going to end up. He thought more of himself than he should have. He is like a man that's drowning in the water. They tell us that the most horrible death that anybody could ever face is drowning. And the person that goes down under the water, it pulls them down, and they struggle and they struggle and they finally get their head above the water. And then eventually they go down for the second time. Their lungs fill with water. Their head begins to pound. And they struggle to live. They might get up out of the water for the second time. When they go down the third time, they usually don't get up the third time. They never come up again. That's Saul. Saul because of his choices that he made, 
is like a man that is going down from the highest position in the land. He was the king over Israel. He had had some success. God was on his side. Uh, the people were, was on his side. The prophet of God was on his side. But when he began to reign, pride entered into his mind. And when he was nobody, he thought he was somebody. That's a dangerous place to be this morning. As long as we realize that we are nobody, God can make somebody out of us. Not the problem that we, that we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. And Saul, because he was on the throne, began this journey of falling and turning away from God. He had had some victories in his reign over the kingdom. He had overcome some of the enemies. Because of his victory, pride entered into his heart. And uh, he thought he was somebody. And nobody could tell him that he was only what he was by the grace of God. Could I say to you and to me this morning, every day I ought to be reminded that I am nobody without God I am somebody with him, but whatever I am, I am by the grace of God. Could I tell you I am who I am by the grace of God? I am where I am by the grace of God. You are who you are by the grace of God. Saul didn't realize that. And so when you open your Bible to the first uh, book of Samuel, chapter 15. I'll take the time to read in chapter 15. That Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, utterly destroy. Notice these instructions God gave very clear to him. You go and destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telem, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. What an army. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. Uh, with them for you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt so the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites and Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah unto thou comest to Shur that is over against Egypt and he took Agag the king of the Amalekites alive how'd you like to have that name Almost feel like saying ag. <laughs> he took a gag. Almost choke you to say that. He was king of the Amalekites. He took him alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared a gag and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, 
and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refuge that they destroyed utterly. How's that for obeying God? Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me. He hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Could I say a word about that? I tell you, when you see somebody turn their back on God, what is your response to that? Could I just interject this this morning? If they were Baptists, I know what they'd do. They'd go home and get on the telephone and say, Did you hear about so and so? Or they'd get on the internet and say, Did you hear what so and so did? You're going to get death to quiet on me this morning? No, I didn't hear, and I don't want to know. i tell you what a man of God did. When he heard they disobeyed the command of God, the Bible said that Samuel cried unto the Lord all night long about it. I just want to say this morning, until you pray for somebody, keep your mouth shut and don't talk about them. you hadn't talked to the Lord, you don't have the right to talk to anybody else about anybody. Oh, I know that's a favorite thing going on in Baptist churches. I know how that is. But Samuel cried unto the Lord all night long. And then Samuel rose up early and to meet Saul in the morning. It was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up in a place he has gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, in this church talk, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Hmm. You write in your Bible, you write right out beside. That's a lie. You say, I don't write in my Bible. Reach over and write in your neighbor's Bible and put it in theirs then. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. They have. Listen to it. They have brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Samuel said unto Saul, Stay. Could I just give you old mountain talk about what that says? Shut your mouth. Stay. And I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me in this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, Wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey, say, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites. Fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, 
but this fly upon the spoil, this evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone the way which the Lord sent me. I brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and I will destroy the Amalekites. But it wasn't me, he said. It was the people that took the spoil. That sound familiar? It wasn't me. I'm not guilty. It's that person sitting down the pew for me. The people took the spoil, the sheep, the oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the, unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Samuel did not let up. He confronted him. And he finally brought this message to Saul to obey is better than all the sacrifices you offer unto God. What God is looking for is childlike obedience to Him. Not what you do, not how well you sing. God just wants obedience from our heart. I, I want to introduce point number one this morning to this passage what started the journey down not only for Saul but for anybody that decides they're going to turn from the Lord very evident in this passage first of all that Saul he commits a sin in the sight of God how could you misunderstand what God said? The prophet of God was very, very clear. This is what God said to do. This is how God wants you to do it. Now you go and you obey the Lord. I ask you this morning, is there really any doubt in your heart what God wants out of you? I'm gonna tell you, there should be no doubt about what God expects out of us. You know why? Because he's given us a book that we bring to church every Sunday, and in that book is God's instruction for his people. And if you don't read it, and if you don't apply it to your life, could I say to you this morning, you ain't got nobody to blame but yourself. You can't blame God. You can't blame the preacher. You can't blame the Sunday school teacher. You can't. You have a copy of God's word in your heart, and we are to study and to read it and to apply it to our life. But Saul knew every bit of that. He knew what God expected, but he committed a sin by disobeying what God said for him. Now, in this sermon today and tonight, there is a principle that I want to share. Uh, behind every one of these points, number one, about he committed a sin by not doing what God told him to do. Do you know the Bible says if we know to do good and doeth it not to us, it is a what? Do we believe that this morning? <laughs> if I know to do good, and then I say I'm not going to do it, I have sinned against God. Now here's a principle that I put on the outline, here's a principle for life out of this little encounter, a big encounter that Samuel and Saul had with this conversation. This disobedience, here is, here is the principle, disobedience always disappoints God. When I do not obey God, God is disappointed with me. God is disappointed. Anybody here this morning know what it feels like to disappoint your mom and daddy? Do you know that feeling? When you did something, you said something, and then you could see the disappointment on their face. Now, my, my mama had a little bit more than just 
disappointment on her face. She had a big, heavy switch in her hand while she was looking at me disappointed. And my look at her was not disappointment. It was pain. <laughs> but could I say to you this morning that when we don't do what God says and we know what God wants us to do and do not obey God, I want to tell you, it breaks the heart of God. It disappoints God that one of his children does not obey what he says. In fact, the Bible said in this passage that when, when, when Samuel went to the Lord, that God said, it repents me that I made him king. That word repent is a word of sorrow. Shame. God says, you know how I feel about that? It breaks my heart. And Saul did not do what I asked him to do. It repenteth me, God said. Now some may be here this morning and say, well how in the world can God repent when God had never done anything wrong? Well, just read with me in verse 29 in this same chapter when Samuel was magnifying who God was. He said in verse 29, And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. Talking about God, he's their strength. He will not lie, he will not repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. I'm telling you, God does not have the need to repent. But this word in this passage is a word of, of, of sorrow and sadness. And God said, my heart is broken because you know how God feels? Here it is. Do you believe God has feelings? Do you know that God has feelings? His heart is broken. He grieves over us. I'm asking you this morning, does God look down at your life and when he sees you and when he hears you that the heart of God is broken this morning? He looks at you and says what you could be, what you could do, what you could become, but I grieve over that. My heart is broken, he says. You'll never know that feeling until you become a parent. Parents know that word. Brother, it killed me when I'd have to look in the face of my mom and daddy. And I knew I'd done wrong. And they knew I'd done wrong. And I'd be just like Saul did. I'd try to make every excuse in the world. God just gave parents some kind of an instinct they know when you're lying and they know when you're telling the truth, right? Somebody says, when that? When children are moving their lips, that's when they're lying. I'm just going to tell you that. I thought I'd tell you. But when I saw the grief in their heart, it broke my heart. This morning I said, do you see the grief in the heart of God? When we don't do what he says, and it Breaks the heart of God. I put on your outline this morning, and I put it very boldly. There are no, listen to it, there are no excuses that are acceptable with God. Got to name me about four excuses Saul made right in this text. First thing he did, start making excuses. When he was confronted with the truth of God, first thing he did, he started making every kind of excuse. And, and the thing about it, do you know these excuses are still used today and we still try to justify our actions by the same excuses today? Do 
Here they are. Number one, read it in verse 13. Samuel said to Saul, and Saul, he came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou the Lord, I have performed the commandments of the Lord. I did obey. What are you talking about? Hear me. And the whole time he was saying, I did obey, there's a bunch of sheep over there bellowing out and making a noise. And he said, I did obey. I slew all the animals. I slew it. And a bunch of sheep over there was ratting him out. <laughs> and the man of God said, well, what is this I hear? My ears don't deceive me and my eyes don't deceive me. I did obey the Lord. That's the question I asked this morning. You know the very essence of being a disciple of the Lord is that we obey what he says. Do you know that when we obey God, it is proof that Jesus is Lord of our life? That he's on the throne, he's in charge, I'm not in charge. And Jesus looked at his followers and he said, why do you call me Lord and don't do the things I ask you to do? Could I tell you that obeying God is the very key to your happiness as a believer? Blessed are those who hear the word of the Lord and keep the sayings of this word. They are happy people. Oh, brother, don't let me get started down that road. Why, there's so many church folks sitting in church this morning, the most miserable people on the face of the earth. They're miserable, and they want you to be miserable. I made up my mind they can be miserable. I'm going to heaven being happy. I'm not going to be miserable all my life. Our obedience is proof of our love for him. Jesus said, if you love me, You'll keep my commandments. He said, I, I did obey. Well, when he was confronted by the man of God and confronted by the bleeding of the sheep, he said, here's his second excuse. <laughs> I almost obeyed all of it. I did a little bit, but I did almost everything God said. You notice in verse 20, Saul said to Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone the way which the Lord sent me. I brought Agag, the king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. I mean, what else do you want me to do? I can see church members sitting on the pew this morning hearing God's word. Well, what else do you want me to do, preacher? I just want you to do what God wants you to do. I don't have a list of things, but God sure does. And I will assure you this morning, you didn't come down here to this church. You don't ever have to come to this church to please me. The only one we're going to please, and that is the Lord. I've got no problem with you if God don't have a problem with you. <laughs> he said, I almost did. I almost did everything. I mean, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Here, here's how we Baptists are. I obeyed the Lord except. And then we got this long list of things in that category. I obeyed God until. I obeyed God until somebody at the church made me mad. You know what that's called? Disobedience. I obeyed God. Here's a good one. I obeyed God 
until I went out of town. And when I went out of town on vacation, I can let my hair down and I can just be like normal people. <laughs> oh, brother. I obeyed God until I had something else to do. I obeyed God when the time was right. I obeyed God. Do I need do I need to talk about this during the summertime? Some of you getting a little squirmy when I say that. I obeyed God, preacher, but I spent all my money somewhere else. Could I remind you, you wouldn't have any money to spend anywhere if God hadn't given it to you to start with. And just because you spent it somewhere else, I want to tell you part of what you what got still belongs to God. I don't care whether you're somewhere else or here. It still belongs to the Lord. I obeyed part of the way. I did some of what God said. I almost did. Boy, I like this one. This this is one that should be worn out. I obeyed God some of the time, but the time I disobeyed, it wasn't my fault. It was somebody else's fault. It wasn't me. It's the people. Now, I did what was right, but do you know that crowd belongs to you? They're the ones that spared the sheep. They're the ones that would not kill all of these animals. Boy, we got the blame game going on, hadn't we? Could I tell you this morning, it's not my neighbor. It's not a family. But it's me, O oh Lord. I can almost hear Saul... He's up there. But Sammy, you know my heart was in the right place. I didn't do the right thing, but you know my heart was in the right place. I wanted to, I meant to. But I just couldn't get it done. I just didn't obey God fully. He's on his way down. He's starting that journey on the way down. You may be here this morning. You've used every one of these excuses. You've used one or two of these excuses. This is the reason I don't come. Somebody else is there. Hear me this morning. I wasn't looking. Well, I was looking for you this morning. But I want to tell you, there's one person I was looking for when I came to church. And it was the one who loved me and died for me and saved me that I came to honor and to glorify and to worship him. Could I stand like Samuel did and say, don't go down that road. Don't find yourself drowning in the water. You can get up this morning. God will rescue you. God has a lifeline for you this morning. He'll get you out of that drowning situation. And the reason we're saved is because Jesus, who is high and lifted up in heaven, the Bible said he humbled himself. And he came down from heaven, down to this earth. And he willingly laid down his life for me. And the scripture said when God saw that, he raised him up out of the grave and highly exalted him and seated him on the right hand of the Father in heaven and given him a name that is above every name. That's the one who loves us this morning. He came down so I could go up you're here and you're, you're lost 
I'm just telling you, you've got to get down before you'll ever get up. And when you humble yourself, God will exalt you. You want to be a servant of the Lord, you've got to humble yourself. You don't just do like Saul. I'm in charge, I'm the king. You've got to remind us this morning, there ain't no kings around here. Did I, do I need to say that again? <laughs> There's only one king, and it ain't here. It ain't us. We're all down at his feet. We are servants of the Lord. I'm going to ask you to stand with your heads bowed, if you will, please, this morning. And just in these closing moments of this service, we've been talking about a little Saul. Little but he became big. And then when he got too big, God had to bring him down. Here's the beginning of his falling down. Do you feel that this morning? Do you sense that this morning? I've come with a word from the Lord. Don't, don't keep in that drowning state. Don't feel like you're drowning in life and you need the Lord to help you. God was so gracious to Saul that he sent a Samuel to him. He's saying to Samuel, Samuel, don't do this. Don't keep on this journey. Turn to the Lord. Do not turn your back on him. Do not turn away from him. He's near. He is nigh unto you. But only when we come in humility before him. Wherever you are, whatever your needs are, I just tell you about God who is able to help you. Father, We know what it feels like. We feel like we're going under. Life and all of its difficulties overwhelm us. And then a lot of things we do to ourselves. But we're grateful you do not turn away from us. But you'll come to our help. Help us to do away with our excuses. Help us to put all of those excuses behind us. Turn to the God who can lift us up. I pray for that this morning. I pray for it. That you stand this morning with your arms open to receive anybody and everybody that will come. But it's not about us. It's about you. May you be honored in this invitation. While we sing it, would you look up here while we sing it, please?
it's never, never too late to do business with God. Aren't you glad the Lord said this? I'm going to cut you off after a couple of verses. He's not like us. He doesn't say that. He's got his arms wide open. I want you to sing that second verse. You think about that. Sing it like you mean it in your heart. When you get on that, thank God I'm saved. If you're really thankful you're saved this morning. If you're saved, then you're safe. You're safe with him. He's ready. He's ready. His face is toward us. His heart is for us. His arms are open unto us. He will not turn you away. You just draw nigh to God. While we sing this last verse again. Jesus, oh Jesus. Whatever you need to do, can you just worship His grace and that's okay. Let's do it on this last day. only only one way with Jesus and that's up he'll never put you down he's in the lifting up business you can come in here down but praise God he's got his hand out to lift you up to him be all the glory and the praise I'm just telling you I am where I am because he lifted me up one day I didn't climb a ladder by myself I just want to tell you I couldn't even start up the ladder. I couldn't even find a ladder. <laughs> but praise God, he lifted me up. Amen. And the Bible said he put our feet on a solid rock. Amen. They're going to play some, well, some fellowship music, handshaking. And if you really, if you really get carried away, neck hugging, bitch. Music, all right. You got some of that. Here we go. You ready? 